everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to live stream in Streamlabs OBS and the settings that I use. And it's happening right now. Hey, welcome back. Today I want to take a moment and do a how-to video about live streaming in Streamlabs OBS. I've recently been having all kinds of issues trying to find the perfect settings. Now I've watched some videos that said uh, change your bit rate to 4500, lower your output, that way people on cell phones and mobile devices can see better without a bunch of lag and issues. So I'm going to cover that today. Come right over here to the cog wheel in the bottom left, settings, click it, we go to output. It's set on audio track one to make it easy and simple. Hardware, I have GeForce GTX cards from NVIDIA, so I picked NVENC new, rate controls CBR. Now bit rate, I do have a fast internet service, so I could go as high as 6,000, but if I did, then on the live streams there would be a whole bunch of lag issues and cutting in and out and I wanted to make it easier for others to watch. So they recommend no more than 4,000. 3,500 to 4,000 if you have at least like a 20 megabytes per second upload speed. Remember you can go to speedtest.net from Okla and check your download and upload speeds. When you're live streaming, it's always going to be the upload speed. Keyframe intervals, one. One. Preset, I went to quality. You can go to max quality if you like. Profile is set to high. I checked the psycho visual tuning. Not 100% sure why, but it was suggested in other videos that I've seen. Max B frames, two. Audio, I leave it at 48 kilohertz because I have good audio equipment. I have the Yeti microphone. Disable, default, disable, disable. Leave it in channel stereo. Now when you come back to video, I run a 2560 by 1080 monitor if I'm going to do 1080 uh, quantity. And I outscale it 2560 by 1080. My Downscale filter, I'd leave it as Lancos sharpen scaling 32 samples. Keep it as common frames per second value. And to find it easier with less lag and artifacting, it was suggested to go from 60 frames per second down to 48 and give it a try. So this most recent live stream that I did with Destiny 2, I went to 48. You can leave it at 60. But for live streaming, I set it at 2560 by 1080 because if I go too big, it's way too much. You can downscale the output down to like 720p or something like that. Uh, it would be a little bit more friendly for cell phones, mobile devices, iPads, whatever. Um, I did leave it at 1080p just because I want the highest quality I can. And it should still push out a 1440p video on the replay if you're watching on a, say a 4K TV at home, maybe you got a smart TV like a lot of people do. You watch YouTube videos, you want good quality and you can always downscale. So if you're watching this on the replay on something, you can downscale it and it's still gonna look really great. I don't run hotkeys. I do everything off my phone because they do offer an app. Streamlabs OBS app, that right there. And when you open it, where you can pick live and everything else, you go down to remote control and hit that, and then voila. See? I have everything at my fingertips. So I can be live streaming and have my phone right here next to the keyboard, and then just switch between scenes like that. It's so much easier than anything anybody tells you in OBS. I, I'm sorry. I've tried OBS, the regular one. Mm -mm. 
you, you can't do half of what you can do with Streamlabs OBS. And I'm not running out and buying a bunch of fancy equipment or spending lots and lots of money. Always trying to bring the best budget tech and gaming on this channel that I can for you. And remember, if you come down here to where it says GPU and you hit one, it's going to go to your second one and kick you right back to your second video card and kick you right back to the original NVENC settings, not the new settings. So make sure you don't do that. Leave GPU set at zero, which is your, your first main card. Like me, I run two cards, so it would be the top card for me and be the single video card in a single PC. So yeah, I hope this helps. Uh, if it did, smash that like button. Share this video out with your friends. Hopefully they won't run into the same issues I've had. But always remember, if you're in someone's live stream and you're having issues with buffering, lower down the quality one or two notches and see if that fixes it. Typically it will. And if you're live streaming to others, make sure to try the tips that I just showed you. Feel free to pause this video at any time. That way you can go back and follow the different patterns that I showed you. I hope it helps. If it did, let me know. If it didn't and you thought this video sucked, leave me a thumbs down and tell me why. Thanks so much for watching this how-to video. Hey, for more great helpful tips, make sure to click these right here. And if you like the content and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that red subscribe button. You don't want to miss anything coming up. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.